Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to our channel and in today's video we are going to look at voice assistants and how they can be used in web development. Voice assistants are playing an increasingly important role in web development because they provide a more natural and intuitive way for users to interact with websites and applications. So without further ado, let's get started. So what exactly are voice assistants and how can they be used in web development? Voice assistants are basically just software applications that allow users to interact with websites and applications using their voice. They're a type of natural user interface or an NUI that enables users to control and access information without the need for traditional input methods like keyboards, touchscreens, or mice. Voice, as voice assistants are becoming increasingly popular as users become more accustomed to using voice commands in their everyday lives. Some key features of voice assistants in web development involves speech recognition. So voice assistants can accurately interpret and understand spoken language, um, converting voice commands into text that can be processed by web applications. NLP. So voice assistants can comprehend the context and meaning of spoken language, allowing them to respond naturally and appropriately to user inquiries. And voice synthesis. So voice assistants can generate human-like speech, providing users with audible responses and updates. Voice assistants make websites more accessible to use to users with disabilities, particularly those with limited mobility or visual impairments. And they can collect user data and preferences to provide personalized experience, um, like tailored recommendations or customized search as well. Um, so all of these are good kind of benefits when it comes to using voice assistants in your web project as well. So let's talk a little bit about the integration of voice assistants in web development. The first one that we're going to talk about are voice SDKs. So developers can integrate voice assistance capabilities into the web applications by using voice SDKs, um, or otherwise known as software development kits, provided by voice assistant platforms like Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or Apple Siri. So voice SDKs are tools that enable developers to integrate their voice assistant capabilities into the web applications. They will essentially provide a set of APIs and tools that allow developers to access voice recognition engines. Integrating voice S SDKs into web development offers several advantages, including simplified voice integration, um, because they streamline the process of integrating voice capabilities into web applications, and that reduces a lot of development time and complexity. Voice SDKs often support multiple voice assistant platforms, like Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, and Apple Siri, enabling cross-platform voice experiences. Voice SDKs also facilitate natural and intuitive voice interactions, enhancing the user experience by providing hands-free and accessible control. Voice SDKs are constantly being updated with new features, bug fixes, and performance enhan enhan enhancements, ensuring that web applications remain up-to-date with the latest voice technology. And lastly, voice SDKs can reduce development costs by providing a pre-built framework for integrating voice capabilities, eliminating the need for in-house development of voice recognition and synthesis um, components as well. So one example of a popular voice SDK is Google Cloud Speech Text. So Google Cloud Speech Text is a cloud-based voice SDK and it provides really high quality speech recognition uh, capabilities for web application. Um, they can accurately convert speech into text with an API powered by the best of Google's AI research and technology. Um, new customers do get some free credits to spend on speech to text, so you can um, sign up and test it out for a little bit. I think for right now it's sitting at $300 in free credits. Um, if not, you can always contact the sales as well. Um, you can see a demo up here where you can sort of input some text in um, and then test out how um, the speech works. So it's quite an interesting tool, definitely one worth working out as well. Voice SDKs are playing an increasingly important role in web development, enabling developers to create more natural, intuitive, and accessible web experiences. As voice technology continues to evolve, voice SDKs will become even more sophisticated and widely adopted, shaping the future of web interactions. So next up is voice-enabled web design. Um, and this is a really growing field and it focuses on creating websites and applications that can be interacted with using voice commands as well. Um, this is a major shift from traditional web design, which relies heavily on visual elements and mouse-based navigation. 
So there are several reasons why voice-enabled web design is becoming increasingly important, mainly being the rise of voice assistants. So assistants like Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Apple Siri have become increasingly popular in recent years, and this has led to a growing demand for websites and applications um, that can be accessed and controlled using voice commands. People are increasingly using hands-free devices like smart speakers and wearables, and this makes it more convenient to use voice commands to interact with the web. And lastly, the need for accessibility is on the rise as well. So voice-enabled web design can make websites and applications more accessible to people with disabilities, such as those who are blind or have limited mobility as well. To create a voice-enabled voice, -enabled voice uh, website or application, you need to consider things like the type of voice assistant, um, things like um, the target voice assistant will determine the specific voice command that the website or application needs to support. You need to consider the user flow and it needs to be designed to be intuitive and easy to follow um, with clear prompts and feedback for the user. Um, the content needs to be optimized for voice search and you sh application should also be able to handle errors gracefully as well. By following those kind of principles, designers and developers can create voice enabled websites and applications that are both user friendly and accessible. So some examples of voice enabled design um, are things like uh, voice activated search. So users can search, can use voice commands to search for information on websites. Users can use voice commands to play games on their smartphones or speakers, and they can use voice commands to receive personalized news summaries based on their interests. It's a rapidly evolving field. There's lots of new and innovative applications for this technology emerging all the time. As voice assistants become even more popular, we can expect to see even more websites and applications that are designed to be interacted with, the, with using voice commands. So the next uh, application we're going to talk about is voice-based user interfaces or VUIs. So VUIs are a type of natural user interface um, that allows users to interact with computers using only their voice. That means users can control devices, access information, and complete tasks simply by speaking to them. VUIs are becoming increasingly popular as they offer a more natural and intuitive way to interact with technology than traditional methods like keyboards and touchscreens. So how are VUIs being used in development? It's a, there's a variety of ways, main one being hands-free navigation and interaction. Um, VUIs allow users to interact with websites and applications without using their hands, um, which is useful in situations where hands are occupied. Um, for example, they can use voice commands to search for items, add items to a shopping, shopping cart, or control music playback. They can make um, websites and applications more accessible to users with disabilities, such as those who have difficult typing or using a mouse. For example, users with visual impairments can use voice commands to navigate websites and hear content read, read aloud. And VUIs can collect user data and preferences to provide personalized experiences. So for example, a VUI could recommend products or services based on a user's past purchases or interest. And VUIs can be used to provide customer support. So users can ask questions about products or services, get help with troubleshooting and make purchases using their voice. And lastly, VUIs can be used to create new forms of content, like voice-activated tutorials, interactive stories, and personalized news summaries as well. All of this leads to a lot of benefits to using VUIs, um, especially things like increased user engagement. Because they provide a more natural and intuitive way to interact with websites, it could potentially lead to an increase in user engagement. Similarly, how VUIs make websites more accessible, it can help reach a wider audience. And VUIs can be used to create new forms of content and services, which can generate a new revenue streams for businesses as well. VUIs are still um, a relatively new technology, but they are rapidly evolving. As speech recognition um, technology improves, the VUIs become more context aware, and we can expect to see even more innovative and creative ways to use them in web development. And lastly, let's talk about voice activated features. So voice activated features are essentially features of websites and applications that allow users to interact with them using voice commands. And these features are typically powered by voice assistant technology like Alexa, Siri, or Assistant. And they can be used for a variety of purposes, including um, navigation, to help navigate to different pages on a website or application. You can use voice commands to search for information on a website or application. They can use voice commands to control playback of music or videos or just volume or change settings. And users can also use voice commands to enter the text into fields or on a website or application. 
it's also good to interact for interaction with content because you can use voice commands to interact with um, content on a website. For example, asking questions about a service or product. Again, all of this leads to improved accessibility and increased user engagement because there makes it makes interacting with a website a lot simpler, especially for those who have difficulty typing or using a mouse and things like that. Voice-activated features are still a relative new technology, but they are rapidly evolving. As speech recognition technology improves and voice-activated features become more context-aware, um, we can expect to see even more innovative and creative ways to use them in web development. As voice-activated features continue to evolve, we can expect to see them in an even more significant role in shaping the future of web development. So what is the future of voice assistants and web development? Voice assistants are rapidly evolving and they are expected to play an increasingly important role in web development in the future. There are some key trends that are expected to shape the voice, the future of voice assistants and web development. Things like improved speech recognition and accuracy. So speech recognition technology is constantly improving and as it becomes more accurate, voice assistants will be um, able to understand natural language more effectively. This will make it possible for users to interact with websites and applications using more natural and intuitive voice commands. Voice assistants are becoming more context aware, which means that they're able to better understand the context of a user's conversation. This will allow them to provide more relevant and helpful responses and also make it possible for them to personalize experiences for user for individual users. So voice assistants are increasingly being integrated with other input methods like touch gestures and keyboard input. So this will create a more seamless and multimodal user experience, allowing users to interact with websites and applications in a way that is most convenient for them. Voice assistants are being used to automate tasks and processes within web applications. And this is making it possible for users to complete tasks more effectively and hands-free. And voice assistants are playing a central role in personal, personalized web experiences. They are able to adapt content, recommendations, and interactions based on individual user preferences. These trends are just the beginning of what is to come for voice assistants and web development. As voice tech continues to evolve, we can expect them to be even more innovative and creative to use with voice assistants to enhance the web experiences. As voice assistants become more sophisticated and widely adopted, they'll play an increasingly important role in the future of web development. They'll make websites and applications more accessible, convenient and personalized, providing a more natural and intuitive way for users to interact with the web. So that was quite a bit on voice um, assistant and how they can improve web development and how they can integrate with web development. But let's talk about the future of web development in general. So the first uh, interesting new tech that has emerged recently um, that I think has is going to have a great impact and on our web development that already has is artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, AL and ML are already being used in web development in power to power features like personalized recommendations, chatbots and image recognition. In the future, we can nice expect to see AI and ML even more integrated to web development, enabling new innovations and possibilities. We've already seen it um, in some web development in varieties of ways. The first way is through AI website builders. So as you have noticed, there's a lot more AI website builders out there. Um, some of the most notable include the Wix, ADI, um, Jimdo, Elementor AI. All of these um, are website builders um, using AI and essentially it helps generator, it helps um, developers produce website more quickly and efficiently, but also be able to um, generate websites that are also on trend, that are branded really well. Um, and all of this team saves a lot of time and cost as well. So it's really interesting to see how website builders have evolved over the years to incorporate AI to make things a lot easier, but also still keep that sleek modernness as well. Um, AI powered par performances um, can also help developers to improve the performance of the web applications and these tools can help analyze performance of an application and suggest ways to improve it. 
um, things like Google Lighthouse is a free tool that uses AI to an analyze web pages and provide recommendations on how to improve their performance and accessibility. Lighthouse can identify performance bottlenecks such as unused CSS and JavaScript and suggest ways to fix them as well. And AI image generation as well. So with AI image generators, um, it's a really rapidly developing field with new and innovative technologies. One of the most common ways to use AI for image generation is through the use of gener uh, generative adversarial networks. So GANs are a type of machine learning model that can be trained to generate images that are indistinguishable from real images. Um, the use of uh, image generation in web development is more and more. Um, you'll find uh, website builders like Wix, Elementor AI, Zoho Builder, they all uh, incorporate some form of image generation within their website building platform that saves time and also a lot of um, cost in terms of getting custom images for yourself and the images are copyright uh, free as well so you'll be able to use them. So let's expand on this a bit and let's go over some website builders um, that incorporate AI in their um, website building platform. So what are AI web builders and how do they work? AI web builders, also known as AI powered website builders, are platforms or tools that leverage artificial intelligence technology to simplify the process of creating and designing websites. These tools are designed to assist users, even those without any technical ex expertise in building professional looking websites quickly and easily. AI web builders typically offer a range of features and functionalities to streamline the website creation process. Here are some common aspects. First of all, they usually have a drag and drop interface. So AI web builders often provide a user-friendly interface that allows you to design your website by simply dragging and dropping various elements onto the page. This eliminates the need for manual coding or programming. These builders also offer a wide selection of pre-designed templates to choose from. These templates are professionally designed and can be customized to suit your preferences. AI algorithms can also suggest design elements, layouts, and color schemes based on your inputs or the industry that you're actually targeting. AI web builders also, also come with an integrated CMS that enables you to create, edit, and manage your website's content easily. Um, this can be things like adding in new pages, updating text, inserting images, in, and incorporating multimedia content effortlessly. So AI web builders usually come with an, um, templates as well, and they usually ensure that the websites created are responsive, meaning that they adapt and display properly on various devices and screen sizes, um, such as desktops, tablets, and smartphones. The responsiveness is crucial for optimal user experience across any device. A lot of AI web builders offer built-in search engine optimization features, and these two tools assist in optimizing your website structure, meta tags, headings, and other elements to improve its visibility on search engine result pages. Some AI web builders include e-commerce features, allowing you to um, create an online store with product listings, shopping carts, and payment integration. And this is particularly useful for businesses looking to sell products or services online. And lastly, analytics and tracking. So a lot of AI web builders can also provide analytics tools to track the website performance, um, like visitor static, uh, stat statistics and conversion rates. These insights can help you understand your user behavior and make informed decisions to enhance your website's effectiveness for design or call to actions. So you can see AI web, AI web builders can simplify the website creation process. They may have limitations in terms of customization, but they are an excellent option for individuals or small businesses seeking to establish an online presence quickly and efficiently. So there are several popular AI web builders available today. We'll go over some examples. Next up is Jimdo, and Jimdo is a really popular website builder that uses AI to generate websites quickly. It offers an AI powered tool called Jimdo Dolphin, which creates websites based on information provided by the user. Jimdo Dolphin also provides the option for manual customization using a drag and drop editor. So to get started, what you want to do is go onto the Jimdo website and we can click on the link in the bio as well if you're um, wanting to get started. And you want to sign up for our client. So you want to look for the start free uh, button or get started uh, button as well to, click, uh, to create a new account. So signing up is free. Um, you can either uh, sign up with Google, Facebook, Apple, um, or just your email. So there are two options once you start get start and when you get started. Jimdo will ask you which way you want to create your website. You can either use 
uh, one of the professional templates that they have that are also mobile responsive. Or if you do have some background for in some coding knowledge as well, then you can also use the editor as well. In today's example, we are going to um, use the website builder. But you want to choose, choose the, the option that best suits your needs, basically. So uh, similar to Wix, what Jimdo will do now is uh, ask you questions about the type of website you want to create. Um, that way, when you're first setting up, Jimdo will set up it with the features um, and offer you templates to match your needs as well. So it's really important that you answer these questions. You can skip these, the questions, but it just makes uh, it cuts on a lot of time um, in terms of choosing a template and also some of the features as well. Um, so you can decide who are you creating a website for. So if it's for yourself or for a team or a business with more than one person, um, it's up to you. And what's this website for? Is it for a hobby? Is it to promote a business? Things like that. Um, in this example, we'll use my new business. And you want to just give it the name of your business as well. What Jimdo will try to do now is try and look on Google to see if there is a business um, in your name as well. Um, so if it's not here, you can just see, you can just continue with that, but you can also go through each of the um, options that they have and just collect that. The purpose of this is that if there's any information on there, like contact information, it'll already automatically bring that over to your site and save time on editing that yourself. And then it'll ask you what category your business is in, and this will it will be useful in, uh, so that they can recommend the right tools and services for your business. And you want to say what the goals of your website are. You can choose up to three, um, whether that's to showcase your work, announce an event, promote a physical business, get customers to contact me. Um, Again, this is just to let Web Jimdo know um, exactly what features it should add in the beginning. And you can decide if you want to add your own photos um, from Facebook or Instagram. And you want to actually tell Jimdo what the theme of your website covers so that they can provide the images and text and structure to kind of match that. And now it's going to ask, ask what your style is and it's basically just so it knows what kind of look that you would like for your website so they can design your website to match. And then it'll ask you what colors you like best. And you can choose up to three pages um, that for what pages your website need. Um, you can always add pages later on. You can also remove pages later on. Um, it's just in the initial build, it'll add, add some pages for you. So now I'll give you the options of two uh, templates. And what you want to do is just pick one that, will, that you want to start working on. Um, again, you can change all of the suggestions that are made here. It's just a sort of starting off point as well. You can also choose to skip the skip as well. Next thing that it'll ask you is if you want to buy a domain if you don't already have one. Um, so this will be needed a lot later whenever you first publish your site, but you can, if you plan on hosting your site on Jimdo as well, then it makes more sense to kind of buy the uh, domain for, through Jimdo as well if you haven't got a uh, domain yet. Um, for now we'll just use a free Jimdo subdomain and then we'll add our domain later. And that's it, Jimdo is now going to start building your website and we can start customizing it on later on. So now let's talk um, about progressive web apps. So progressive web apps are apps that offer native-like experiences, even when they are accessed offline or in slow internet connections. PWAs are becoming increasingly popular and we can expect to see them more become even more widespread, widespread in the future of web development.
PWAs are built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and they can be accessed from any browser that supports web standards. However, PWAs can also take advantage of de device-specific features like push notifications, offline access, and home screen shortcuts. PWAs often offer a number of advantages over traditional websites. Um, the main one being is that they're more accessible. PWAs can be accessed from any device with a web browser, which makes them more accessible to users with disabilities. PWAs don't require developers to, separate, to create separate native apps for each platform, and this saves developers a lot of time and money. And PDO, PWAs are more engaging, um, especially for user experience, that, than traditional websites. This leads to higher user retention and conversion rates as well. So let's look at some popular examples of PWAs. First one is Duolingo. So Duolingo is a popular la language learning app that also provides, um, this also available as a progressive web app. That means you can use Duolingo in your web browser without having to install a dedicated app. Uh, the du Duolingo P PWA offers all the same features as a native app, including access to over 30 languages, uh, interactive lessons, tracking progress, offline access, etc. But the PWA is very fast and reliable and it loads quickly and runs smoothly even on slow internet connections. To vi use the Duolingo PWA, just simply visit the Duolingo website in your web browser and you'll be then uh, prompted to continue on the PWA as well. Overall, the Duolingo PWA is a great option for anyone who wants to learn a new language without having to install a dedicated app. It's fast, it's reliable and it's accessible from any device. Another example is the Washington Post. So the Washington Post was one of the early adopters of progressive web apps. In 2016, the Post launched a PWA version of its mobile site, and the PWA was designed to be fast, reliable, and engaging, even on slow internet connections. Um, the PWA has a number of features that make it way better to read the news on mobile devices. For example, it can load articles instantly, even when the user is offline. It can send push notifications to users about important news stories. It can be installed on the user's home screen like a native app and be used to create custom reading lists as well. Um, the Washington Post PWA has been well received by users. In a study by Google, the PWA was found to be a, to load up to 100 times faster than the traditional mobile site. The PWA also increased user engagement with users spending an average of 30% more time on the PWA than on the traditional mobile site. Um, so the Washington Post PWA is a great example of how PWAs can be used to improve mobile web experience. Um, they're fast, reliable, and engaging, and they can be used to create a variety of different web apps from news apps to e-commerce apps. The next popular tech that's emerging recently that's gonna make a big seen in the web development world is AI image generators. So what are image gener AI image generators? An AI image generator is a text to image tool that was designed to make it easier for digital marketers and content creators to create images online. By using a machine learning algorithm, they are able to generate realistic photos and illustrate based illustrations based on a set of text instructions. By using the machine learning algorithm, they're able to generate realistic photos, illustrations based on a set of instructions as well. An AI text to image generator often makes use of a machine learning technique called artificial neural networks that can receive input in the form of words, which it then processes to, make an, to generate an image. The entire process takes a few seconds, so you can see the results of your work almost immediately. But before they're reliably deployed, neural networks require a lot of training. Um, almost like connect the connection, making the connection between words and objects for the first time. This is the same process that AI generators go through during training, but as, at a much faster speed with a lot more data. Um, there's a few different types of text to model, text to image AI models, which have evolved over the years. So one type of text to image AI model is the generative adversarial networks, so GANs. So earlier iterations of AI generated images relied on these uh, GA GANs. Um, in these models, two neural networks are pitted against each other and one network, the generator, is responsible for creating the images, while the second network, the discriminator, is used to determine whether or not the images are real or fake. Uh, moving away from this then are the diffusion models. So 
uh, text-to-image AI mo models are moving away from GANs and towards diffusion models, um, which is a completely different approach. So diffusion models are trained on hundreds of millions of images, each with a caption describing, in, describing the image in words to learn, and the relationship between text and images through the process um, as well. Um, and in this process, the network also learns to infer other conceptual information about the world, like what colors or elements would make an image feel like it was created by a certain brand or a certain company. And after they've been trained, the models learn to take a text prompt provided by the user, create a low resolution image, and then gradually adding details to turn it into a full image, because it's now learnt how to do it a billion times over. And this process is repeated until the final high resolution images, image is produced. Um, diffusion models don't just modify existing images, they generate everything from scratch without reference to any images that you might find on the internet. That means if you ask them to generate an image of a dog, for example, they won't just find an image of a dog and then add some details to it. They'll create the image of a dog from scratch based on their understanding of what a dog is. And this approach has quite a few benefits. They're, they're more efficient to train. Images generated by diffusion models are more realistic and it makes it easier to control the generated images. For example, if you want the dog to be a specific color, then you can just include that in your text prompt as well. Overall, text-to-image AI models have come a long way in recent years, and with the advent of diffusion models, they're able to generate more realistic-looking images than ever before. So now that we understand how this works, um, now let's take a look at some popular AI image generators. So a really popular AI image generator tool out there is Midjourney. Midjourney's platform makes it really easy to create beautiful art using uh, AI. The uh, Midjourney's uh, art generator is really advanced and anyone can create professional quality image pieces with simply just a, a click of the button. So Midjourney is an AI image operator uh, generator like OpenAI and it's the name of an artificial intelli intelligence project that's being tested and improved and has been operations in operation since July 2022. This project is gradually gaining popularity and is quite famous on Discord's uh, platform as well. In Midjourney can create an artificial image from piece of information given piece of given information. Artificial intelligence will then analyze the user's information to get the data and return the results. The system has a really vast database and complex algorithm to combine images related to keywords into a completed picture. If you go onto the website and click on their showcase, they'll show you some uh, existing AI created images um, as well in their community showcase. And you can see different kind of really high quality images and all of these images were created um, through AI by people just simply using uh, this app as well. Midjourney has its own set of pros and cons that should be considered. Some of the pros of Midjourney is that it's really a, a quick and easy image generation with just a simple text prompt. You can generate st stunning images and unique images as well in a matter of min minutes. Beta versions are available via Discord bots, so Midjourney is currently in beta and can be accessed through Discord, Discord bots, making it easy to use and accessible to everyone. And this whole community showcase thing is really good because the community showcase feature allows you to browse and be inspired by the user's artwork and filter them by recent and top related and things like that. Some of the cons of Midjourney is that the AI generated art copyright regulations are unclear and it can lead to some legal issues. And compared to some other AI art tools, the, art, the app's functionality might be limited. But still, the, the quality of the work is really high and it might be even something um, just to even play around with and have a look at to see what kind of images that you can create. Um, they have a documentation, documentation section where you can sort of learn sort of uh, how to get started, the user guide and uh, how to get started using Discord as well. Um, so that's also a really popular option as well. So another popular image uh, generating tool using AI platform is Hypotenuse AI. So Hypotenuse AI image generation tool is a really smart program capable of translating your text prompts into an image in any style that you want, despite having never seen a picture of, for example, say a horse swimming underwater. 
hypotenuse AI's image generator can extrapolate from what it has learned to render it for you. In the same way, you and I can probably sketch a bad drawing of what we know of horses underwater. In doing so, the image generates a are not copied from anywhere and they're completely unique to you. With hypotenuse AI, you can try it for free. They do have a free trial. You can sign up with uh, your email or even just with the Google account and you can sign up and with the, with for a free trial as well. So if you wanted to sign up with Google, for example, you just want to click on continue with Google. And then you're kind of presented with this image generation uh, platform. So the way their platform works is you input a small description of what you want to see and their AI will generate that a picture for you. Like our AI content writers um, and some other AI content writers, their images are generated from scratch and each time just from what the inputs that you give it. Their AI has learned from millions of images and text all over the web and gained an understanding on how to read and create relevant pictures. Each time you hit that generate button, it doesn't copy or pull images from anywhere, but considers the concept that it knows and creates new images from scratch each time. So what you want to do once you've signed up is you can essentially just go through all of these and all these fields and just fill in what you want. Um, if you're unsure, you can always try an example. So the first thing that you want to do is describe your desired image. Um, and you can see some uh, placeholder values in there, but what you can do is try an example and it'll generate an example for you. So for example, seaside town, digital art illustration, digital painting, concept art, shiny, whatever it is. Um, and then what you can do then is switch the guide me section on and off as well. So you can choose like what type of photo that you want, um, aesthetic, mood lighting, artist style and things like that. So we'll keep it really simple, say we'll do or even cat with a cowboy hat for example. Um, and then we can choose what type of image. So do you want a photograph, a digital art illustration, 3D render or artwork? We'll do digital art. Um, aesthetic, so what kind of aesthetic do you want? Do you want sort of like a cyberpunk, fantasy, cybernetic, whatever it is? Um, say we'll do cybernetic. And then what kind of mood lighting that you want? If you want sort of light, calm, dramatic, golden hour, things like that. And you can select up to three. And what kind of style that you want it in. If you want it an oil painting, digital painting, airbrush, um, things like that as well. And you can select up to three as well, or you can just leave it blank. Um, again, so this is only here whenever you are, you have the guide me toggle selected. Um, otherwise you can just type in every, all of these things in here directly. And then you can choose what sizing that you want it as well. And then once you're done, you just click generate and you just wait for your image to essentially be rendered. And once it's done, it'll load all of the images that it comes up um, based on the prompts that you've selected and typed in. Um, and these images are completely unique. They've not been pulled from a certain website or anything like that. It's, usually, it's fully fo following the prompts that you've given it. And then from there, you have the option to save any images that you like, and then you can use them for whatever purposes that you need them for. Um, there's lots of uses for AI generated art. And tools like this make it really easy to kind of do it yourself and do it at home as well. So that's using the guided prompts here, but what you can do is unselect that and then just type everything um, within the prompt here. And again, you can always try an example um, and you can see uh, it comes with all the prompts on there as well. So pencil drawing of a person, say we're going to train and the different sort of uh, styles that they have here as well. Um, and then once you're done, again, you just want to pick the sizing and then you just want to click generate and see what it comes up with as well. And it's the same process. You just type in all the features that you want of this image, click generate. And then again, your images will be generating on the right side. Um, and then you can just pick from them as well. And you can see all of the images loaded. And again, from here, um, it'll show you the, it'll show you the 
uh, prompt that you use and the prompt that they, they've used and you can from there you can download them. Um, when you are downloading from the free trial they will come with a watermark and um, to remove that watermark you do need to subscribe to their premium version which is about $29 a month. So now let's talk about some uses. There are lots of ways that you can use images that are that have been generated by AI. One use case might be through content marketing. If you are a small time creator who writes uh, for a living, you don't have a marketing budget um, nor a talented crew to kind of work with. So creators like yourself have to search for sort of stock photos, to use blog pictures, copywriting captions to market your newsletter subscriptions, or if you're writing um, blog pieces, journals, things like that, good, Im good images um, are also really important for that, but you might not always have the budget for it or even the time. This is where uh, image gener generated Im AI generated images can really help. Um, because they can execute that task instantly without a lot of complaints, whether that's through ads, product showcases, blog pictures, social media posts, AI image generators have been trained to do it all, low cost and big impact, depending on what platform that you use. Um, on a larger scale, um, AI content marketing can be a completely different ballgame altogether. Another surprising use of AI is through architecture and design. So with the rising popular, popularity of image generators using AI, a lot of people, amateurs and professionals, have been turning to AI for design inspiration for their homes and business. Even the most outlandish concepts can now be done in minutes without having to construct 3D models from scratch. It can address design flaws and architectural weaknesses, and this would also mean that that process is a lot less stressful. Granted, a designer will still have to go through several iterations, including minor tweaks on the graphic editors before the image can be reliably used as a conceptual model, but that generative AI can help ease the creative load. Uh, today, AI-generated art is used to create new forms of music and poetry. Advertising, architecture, fashion and film are just some of the fields where realistic images and animations made from AI can make a really sizable impact. As mentioned before, depending on what platform you use, um, so for example, this is hypotenuse, um, the images that you create are, cop are free uh, copyright, making, a really, making it a really great tool for content mar marketing if you're needing uh, images for your blog, um, for your social media posts and things like that. So with hypotenuse, every time you hit generate, it doesn't copy or pull images from anywhere, but it considers the concept that it knows and creates new images each time. So these four images that we've created, they aren't uh, any, there aren't any other images like that on the internet. Um, so these are completely unique. Um, when you are describing your image, it's really important that the more detailed your prompt is, the more likely your results will be even more uniquely yours. If you are worried about co someone copying design, don't be, there's always a chance that someone will use a similar prompt, but Hypotenuse is there to kind of help brainstorm and automate tedious tasks to kind of stay creative. Um, Hypotenuse, Midjourney, Dali, all of these AIs, they pull, for, they don't pull images from the con from the, they don't pull from any existing images, they essentially just create new images as well. With Hypotenuse, the images that you create with them are public domain. You don't own the copyright. Um, they can be used for by anyone for any purpose, including commercial purposes. So feel free that, to use them for anything that you like, but they can be also be used by other people as well. Having said that, there are some cons to AI-generated art. Um, one of the cons is that it lacks human touch, so AI-generated art may lack that personal touch and emotional depth that can come with being created by a human artist, um, and there are always some ethical concerns, so some people are concerned about the ethical implications of using AI to create art, particularly if it results in the displacement of human artists. Being a relatively new form of technology, it opens up the tool to potential abuse, um, and there are, uh, depending on what platform you use, there are some placeholders measures out there to kind of facilitate that concern. Um, for example, Hypotenuse AI, it censors not safe for work content. So anything with, you know, hateful content, profanity, things like that, um, across all tools as basic safeguard against potential abuse. It may not be much, but is something better than nothing. Um, 
Another issue can also just be that there is limited creative control. So while AI algorithms can generate art and you can be as specific as you want whenever you are describing the art, the artist still has some limited control over the final product as the algorithm is making decisions about the art's um, placement of where they've of their composition and style as well. Um, but overall, the pros and cons of AI generated art will depend on the specific use case and goals of the artist or organization that's using it. Overall, opinions on AI generated art will vary from artist to artist, and some may see it as a valuable tool for enhancing their art artistic practice, while others might see it as a threat to their livelihood and integrity of art itself. Um, what's really important is that you are using it in a way that enhances your business, that enhances your skills as well. Um, it's definitely a really useful tool and it can be used to help save some time and kind of enhance the body of your work as well. Um, even if you want to try out some of the things as well, it's um, it's definitely something worth trying at least, especially with hypotenuse as it comes with the free trial. Um, Mid journey as well, you can, you can join through Discord. So there's definitely some use cases out there and definitely I think it should, it should be something that everyone should try. Maybe not something for for every part of their business, but something definitely that can save some time or streamline your work a little bit easier. Next up we have WebAssembly, and WebAssembly is a low-level assembly language that can be compiled to run in the browser, and this makes it really possible to create high-performance web applications that can run code written in other languages like C and C++. WebAssembly is still in its early stages of adoption, but it has the potential to revolutionize web development. And lastly, the IoT, or the Internet of Things. The IoT refers to the growing network of interconnected devices such as smart homes, wearables. Web development is playing a key role in enabling IoT and we can expect to see them to see even more of uh, web-based applications for IoT devices in the future. And that's a wrap for today's video on the future of web development, specifically with voice assistants. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and give us a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.